Hi, welcome to the world re re premiere of the Interfragmentary Force Model of New Electromagnetism version 5. This is the fourth video of the New Electromagnetism series, and New Electromagnetism is the fourth book of Ethereal Mechanics. This is a B version, which was redone to improve the flow for the general audience. A little bit less technical. So what we're going to do is we're going to derive the Interfragmentary Force Model we're going to show you experimental corroboration and then show you a little behind the scenes to show you what Patreon members are currently watching. Now, the interfragmentary force model is also called the fragment to fragment force model. It's also called the fragmentary force model. What it is, it's the force between two fragments of wire that will then be used to compute the total force between two wire structures. So if we were to take two loops of wire and we wanted to compute the total force between them, well, the first thing we do is break it up into little differential lengths that we call fragments. And then we compute the fragment to fragment effects. And then what we do is we sum all of those up to find the total force. So first we find the fragment to fragment effects. Then we, after we compute that, then we can find the complete loop effects. So basically what a fragment is, is basically a very small length of wire. What we say in mathematics, it's a differential length of wire. And what we did in the last video is we developed the equation for the effects of a fragment of a source loop on a charge somewhere else. Again, I'll say that again. We computed the total effects of a source fragment on a target charge somewhere else. So in this video, we're going to use that model of the fragment to charge effect to compute the effects of a source fragment on the conduction charges. And then we're going to use it again to compute the force on the uncovered charges or the unbalanced charges. And then we're going to sum those to get the total force between two fragments, the interfragmentary force. So. Let's begin. First, we apply this model to the conduction charges. The velocity of the target charges is the velocity of the, of the conduction charges, which is the velocity relative to the wire, plus the velocity of the target wire. Remember, all of our velocities are relative to the medium. So this velocity here, the target wire, is the velocity relative to the medium. And this is the velocity relative to the wire. So the total velocity of the target charges is VTEC plus VTW. And the total target charge is QTC. So we're going to insert those using these identities into this model to get this. Let me read you off this subscripts here. These are kind of confusing. You could probably come up with your own that are better than these. This is the far... The force on the target conduction charges due to a differential length of the source. That's what that means. This is a fragmentary model. Okay, just keep that in mind. And next, we're going to compute the force on the unbalanced charges. Now, the velocity, because these charges do not move relative to the wire, their velocity is the velocity of the wire, the velocity of the target wire. And the quantity of the, of the conduction charges, based on what we've learned in the past, is equal and opposite to the conduction charges. So we're going to put, for the target charge, we're going to put minus the QTC. And for the velocity of the target, we're just going to put VTW. And that's pretty much going to look like that. And the quantity of conduction charges is equal to the quantity of mobile carriers in the target per meter times the length of the meter. This is based on the material. This is different for copper. It's different for silver. It's different for gold. It's different for nichrome. Okay. Now, we're going to take the first one, which is the force on the target conduction charges, and the force on the target unbalanced charges or uncovered charges and we're going to sum those together and that's what we get. Now in vortex algebra okay vectors are not commutative but scalars are. 
So let's slide some scalars around to clean this up. This is a scalar here because it's not bold. This guy cancels with this guy. Okay, we can move these current scalars out of the vortex equation to make it simpler. And this is a scalar because it is the magnitude of a vector. The magnitude of a vector is a scalar, so this can be slid around. This is the direction of a vector. This little hat here means this is the direction of a vector. Once you add the, the magnitude of a director with the direction of a vector, you get a complete vector. And so this whole thing cleans up like this. Very nice and clean. Okay, but this is the fragmentary form. Now, in order to get the full force on the target charge, we have to integrate all the fragments over the source loop and over the target loop. These nomenclature here, these DD, means it requires a double integral to reduce this to normal force. So this is like a double derivative of the force. Use the force, Luke. This is an alternate notation for this, which I'm not really happy about, and I don't think I'm going to use, but basically the force due to two, two, two fragments. That's what that's saying. Uh, this is the normal one that everybody uses. I, I think I've, I've come to terms that this is the best one to use for this. It's, uh, this might be confused if you don't know what the, what the subscripts mean. You can't be confused by the double D. So we take our interfragmentary force model here, and we use an integral, integrate over all the fragments in the source and all the fragments in the target. And this it would be the total force between these two loops. Now there's limitations of this. This model here is only for filamentary source and target wires, low frequency, and where the source and the target wire are not the same. This is not a limitation of the physics. This is a limitation of the derivation. You can take the fundamental any V5 models and you can compute anything you want. For example, by changing up how you derive, you could compute the torque between this loop and this loop. You can compute the magnetic moments. Um, anything to your heart's content. The only reason why I have limitations on this is because of the simplifications we use to get a simple answer. Okay, but you can take new electromagnetism to any level of complexity you want, including what we're going to do for a much later video. We're going to get into um, retarded time, where we consider the time it takes for the effects to travel at, from different sections of the loop. Okay, that's just a much more complicated mathematical uh, application. That's all it is. It's not a limitation of the physics. It's a limitation of the derivation. So an interesting note here that if you notice in our final fragmentary form, the velocities of the target wires completely drop out. So what we're saying here is the force between these two wires is only a function of the instantaneous current in them and their relative position between them. Now, some of you are going to say, well, if these have currents in them, well, as this guy moves, he's going to couple energy into this wire. That's going to change the current. Yes, and that's going to be the subject of one of the upcoming videos where we show how one loop can couple EMF, or what we now call VIM, to the one loop to the other. They can go both ways. Okay, everything in electromagnetism is reciprocal. And as the VIMs are coupled, they could change the current. But that would be a second step. Okay, so uh, we're not. So we're saying this is true. It's just yeah. If these are in motion, that is going to couple energy between the loops, and that will alter the current. But whatever the instantaneous current is at any moment, that will be the force between them. Okay, independent of their motion, their motion will change the current. But when that current changes, this will be the force. Okay, so this is the instantaneous force. It's independent of the velocity of the loops of wire. Okay, so our first experiment is a parallel wire force experiment. So we have two parallel wires. This is the physics simulation software. This is the physics two, you can tell, because the background is green, the physics one, the backgrounds are blue. Okay, and the reason why we have two different versions is Physics 1 was uh, developed basically just to study railgun stuff. It wasn't intended to become a general purpose modeling software, but it evolved into that. And unfortunately, as we evolved and we found the new Electromagnum V5 breakthrough using it, 
uh, it came apparent that, that we needed to study bodies in rotation. And rotations inside of rotations inside of rotations, this physics once offer could not handle that and it could not be rewritten uh, in its form to, without making it very kludgy and difficult to use. So physics two is the evolution of physics one, where we can now handle rotations inside of rotations, and all of the transforms are done and they work. It's a thing of beauty. Um, but now what we've done is we, we limit this to any V5. Um, so we can still do the classical attractions of wires in physics one, and we're using physics two to compute the attraction. And you can see we get exactly the same answers. These are now, we didn't actually run this experiment because we we're not putting 10,000 amps into anything. We figured in this one, if we're getting the same answer as classical theory, and I have all the dimensions here, so if you want to run classical theory to get your answer, I'm sure when you apply it, you're going to get very close uh, because most people, when they do this, they're going to approximate an infinite line source, and that's fine, and then just limit it to 10 inches. You're going to get very close if you do that. Uh, if you want to go through the trouble, of, then you're going to get this answer here. So whatever. But now we put this in our wrap up and show that everybody gets the same answer. That's good. Now, we didn't actually run this experiment. This is just a corroboration between all of the existing theories. Uh, this experiment we, in fact, did run. And these are the answers we got experimentally. We also get the same answer for classical theory, NEV5. What this is, this is a three inch rectangular ma magnet looking down from the top, north side up. This is a six inch by one inch loop of wire that's got 20 amps in it. Well, in our experiment, we had 20 turns with one amp. It worked pretty much out to the same thing. And then, so what you do is you can, what we're looking for is a force pulling it in the Y, in the X direction. This is a few, um, slightly above this magnet. And we're looking for the force in and the force down in Z. And that's what we get here. And this is a loop above magnet. Uh, there should be an experimental code. Forgot to put it in because this actually was run as an experiment many years ago, actually. Uh, the reason why is we wanted to develop some experiments to test all of our new theories going forward because, because if new electromagnetism V5 gets a red box somewhere on that punch down list, we're looking for a new electromagnetism V6. Okay, that's just the way it goes. I mean, so... Uh, this is experiment three. This is where we take that same loop and we put it side by side with the magnet and we're looking for the repulsion in the Y direction. These are all the dimensions here. This experiment was also run. And we should have an experiment code there, but I didn't develop the experiment codes till later, so I don't really... This is kind of the experiment code here. So in the next videos, um, we do have the electrokinematics video it was released to YouTube, uh, but I'm not sure I like how it flows. I may end up re-filming it for next week's premiere. Not sure yet. Got to review it, see if it needs to be redone uh, with the more fast, quick pace flow that seems to keep people's attention better. After that, we're going to apply the fragment to point force model to compute the interfragmentary VIM, what we used to call the EMF. Okay, this will show how those two loops moving relative to each other will induce currents in each other that would change the force, as we talked about previously. And we're going to show experimental and simulation results. After that, we get into the really fun stuff. We're going to talk about things that no one has ever seen before. My Patreon members have seen this. This is the first world release. We're going to show char Coriolis charge motion, where it comes from, that it's really there. We show the experimental and then the next video after that is centripetal charge motion. And then the video after that is Venturi charge motion. Okay, and if you want to see these now, these are available to Patreon members now. you got to become a Patreon member. $5 a month is all you need. And you'll be able to see these videos now and not have to wait for the premieres weeks from now. My Patreon members have already seen these a couple of months back now as it is. After that, we get into new electromagnetism improved model of magnets and conductors and we got a lot more after this, but we'll really, they, the order may change. So what my Patreon members are watching now is the build-up to the very, very first electrogravitic measurement. Yes, the first 
production of a gravity force using electricity. So if you want to get in on this and see this now, this will this item will not be released to the public probably until Thanksgiving time. Okay, so just let you know that if you want to get in on it now, it's five bucks. You can watch all the videos and watch this experiment be done and the trials and tribulation because this is a very small effect and we have to be very precise in the build because it's a very tiny, tiny effect. It's gravity is a very tiny effect. So if you want to see all that, five bucks a month is all you need to get to see all the videos and all the technology as soon as it's produced and released. Okay, five bucks a month. Become a passenger. Be on the journey with me. Help out. Okay, I have got a lot more responsibilities now at work. It is taxing my weekends. It is taxing my brain. I'm not as productive on this as I used to be because I've got more responsibilities at work. So if I can get enough Patreon members that I can do this full time, um, that will help tremendously and I'd appreciate it. You know, five bucks a month isn't going to break you for those people that aren't already Patreon members. Repository site, it's up, not up to date yet. I haven't put all the links to the new Electromagnetism V video, videos in there yet. Sorry, this is low priority. I will get to it eventually. Right now, just go to the YouTube site and look up for the uh, NEV5 playlist. Uh, I also recommend you look for the Electrogravity playlist. That'll show you where new Electromagnetism V5 comes from. And a shout out to Sebastian for doing the blog site. Thank you. No more voodoo physics.